All right, I removed the laser cannons from the clamps and you can see it on them. There's a pretty nasty seam. Are we surprised? I'm not. These sorts of things usually have them. Um, but the clamp squeezed it so hard while the glue was setting that a small bead of plastic came out along the seam. This means there's no putty to do, just sanding down to make it look good. The other thing is these guns go in the wing like this. You can't see it. They go in the wing like this. And setting in the wing like that, well, that seam is going to be pretty hard to see except for up in the front. I'm going to remove it, don't worry. I've, I know how to remove something like that. It's just, I'm just letting people know in case they don't feel like removing something like that. But the seam will be kind of hidden in here in the wings. That one don't fit very well. What about this one? There we go. Okay, so the cannons will fit in there just fine. Just letting you know. Okay. What's up with them? It looks like this one's warped a little bit. I'm going to need a heat gun on it. Yeah, this one's warped a little bit. Uh, I told you guys yesterday one of them was warped. It doesn't, it raises up. Whereas this one does not. I don't know if you can, you won't be able to see it here. No. But they're not perfectly, oh, it helps if I put them on camera. They're not perfectly identical. This one's barrel raises up at the end and this one doesn't. Okay, you can see it. I can see it there on the video that that's doing that. Anyhow, I'm going to get to work on this. I'm working primarily on the TIE Fighter right now, cutting little tiny styrene rings to uh, fabricate the laser cannons. And I'm going to get something out and try to fabricate laser cannons with tiny little pieces of tape. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, everybody. I'm working on the seams on the Cylon Raider. Um, yes, there's silver paint all over it. Because with the silver paint and the reflections in the light that come from it, like that, you can see where the seam work still needs to be done, like right in there. Okay. And there's a couple of spots over here. That's why I'm painting it with silver. I have the guns unclamped. You can see I drilled out the barrel. Okay, I did that on both. There's silver paint along the seam line on this one, and I can see I still have some more work on it. It, the the guns don't have to be 100% perfect, they have to be close because they're down in a trench and you're not going to really be looking at the sides of them. I also have to bend the top of this one down some because it rises up a bit. A little bit of heat and that'll bend down. In fact, they both rise up. Yeah, they both do. This one's in better shape than the other one if you're, if you're looking at the seams. One's definitely better than the other. This one will take less work. This one, I definitely have to fix the back of it too. So just wanted to let you guys know what I've done so far. I still have not soldered the LEDs together. The seam work's gonna hold me back more than anything on this thing. And these, are, these four parts right here are the only ones with major seams. So that's why I'm hitting them now. Once I solder the LEDs together, I figured out the stand already. These things won't fly together. And I'll be painting. Okay? Since the contest deadline got extended 20 days, I'll have plenty of time for paint. So what I'm going to do now, get the putty out, hit these guys up where it needs to be done, and then I will be Ready for another hour of sanding pleasure. Okay. Just thought I'd show you guys silver paint and the reflections. You can see 
right along here. I know some of you do this with primer. And primer might actually fill a few of these seams up. But I can also tell it's rough right in here. This needs a lot more sanding than I gave it. Okay. And that's why I use the silver paint. I'm going to put another coat of filler on it. This one over here, I know if I put a good primer on this, that will fill, so I'm not too worried about that. This one here might, it might not. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the putty one more time on a few judicious spots on these wings. Once that's done, any little tiny cracks left, I'm going to hit with primer. I'll start using primer from there. Like I can tell right here this needs more sanding because I can see a little bit of the putty showing through. Yeah, I can see a little bit of the putty in the silver paint. And again, that's why I do it because the silver paint makes that show. And I can, th uh, that's just paint, how the paint went on. There's supposed to be a ridge right here where my fingernail is running along. And it's there and it's clean. Anyhow, just thought I'd show you guys I'm still puttying all night long. Back in a bit. Hello everybody. I'm about to start wiring the uh, Raider. First off, the seam filling is done on the laser cannons. The, all the seams are taken care of. They're almost not visible anymore. I put a primer coat on there and they won't be. A primer will clean them up completely because there's just micro bits of seam to deal with. They are done. Now I've been complaining about the barrel pointing upwards on the laser cannon. They're both identical. They both do it the exact same way when you set them down side by side. It led me to think that it's by design. When you put them in the wing and glue them down, they end up pointing out straight. So don't worry about a little bit that being off a little bit that's fine speaking of wings uh their seams are all done on both wings except for this one spot right here needs a little bit more work and then i've got the seam filling done on these and they are ready for primer one of them's ready for primer this one just needs a teeny bit of work the laser cannons are ready for primer which means I gotta get the main body of the ship ready for primer, and that means the wiring's gotta get done, so that's what I'm working on now. Now, good source of wire Put that back over there, is Ethernet cable. I have a small business, we have computers who run Ethernet cable all the time, and sometimes after being used repeatedly, unplugged, plugged in, unplugged, plugged in, those wires die. And inside there, you'll find, I think it's seven or eight strands of braided wire. All color coded. Okay, here's some brown. That's enough wire for the entire TIE fighter, by the way. I'm gonna use the blue and white on the Cylon Raider. There's about four feet of it here. I had a 20 foot cable die, so I just stripped out the wire and cut it into lengths. And a good idea to do before you start any wiring project is put a color code on the directions. So if for some reason you shelf the model for a year, you can pull it out and you'll know what voltage you're using and what color wire means what. I have a problem. I have an Enterprise 1350NX that's about half done. I ran into trouble with the seams. Go figure. That's when I first got back to modeling and I didn't know what I was doing. I do now and I'm going to pull it out soon and finish it. Um, I don't remember what voltage it was. I know it's written down on the internet and it's in a video on the internet so it's not an issue. It's just not written on the directions. And I'm telling you guys, write this on the directions. Like I have it right there across the bottom. All right. Well, let me get cutting wire and stripping it. And I'll come back when the soldering's done. So you guys can see how that worked. All right, everyone. I'm going to move. I'm using a vice instead of helping hands today. I don't know why. It just felt better. The part's a little bit bigger. And I don't really need to be using helping hands on something like this. Okay, there we go. All the positives are soldered together, all the negatives are soldered together. There doesn't have to be any insulation because there's no way these parts are gonna touch. It's far too rigid in there and fixed. Okay, I'm gonna hook it up to power so you guys can see how it looks. I have to wire up to, 
another one of these and the rear engine port but this is what it looks like it, it's more sourcey in person okay if it looked that way in real life I'd be doing a little dance again if I do a little filtering you with my fingers you guys can probably see exactly what it looks like a photo will probably be correct it looks good though don't get me wrong this one's wired up and ready to go in the ship. I'm gonna go glue it in, get the other one out, and start wiring it. Okay, back in a bit. All right, everyone, I got all the wiring done, all of it. Um, well, not done. I need to cut an access hole right about here because that's about where the center of gravity is gonna be on it. There's a, there's a lot more stuff on the front than the back of the model basically. I'm not 100% positive of that. I know that's where the kit stand goes. Okay. It's once I get the plug wired in, I can wire the plug to this real quickly. And I got to figure out what plug I'm going to use. I already know I'm going to make this removable from the stand by putting a plug on the bottom of it. Same thing I did on the um, Viper. It, it works pretty well. I've done it on three models now. So, once I get the plug wired in there, that means I can finish the wiring on the model itself. Now, this is the plate that the stand goes in. I'm not using this hole. I'm probably going to put it back here, which means I need to seal this hole up not that hard to do some Aves epoxy scope will seal that hole up very quickly okay and this plate goes in either that way it goes that way because it's key it won't go this way so it goes this way so I want to put my stand right there which means I can go ahead and glue this part down and then do my drilling for the stand after this part's glued down. And then fill in that after a part's glued down. It'll be easier to fill that in with it on there. So we're gonna clean this one up and glue it down. I got a nice spot here for my stand. The batteries are not gonna be on the model. I know earlier video I talked about doing it that way. I've decided against doing that. And it'll be easier for me to put the base, the jack in for the uh, wiring if this is glued down and pressed down in there and I'm not going to do it until that nub is removed so let me remove that nub glue this part down and I'm getting where I can start putting all the surface details on this thing real quickly especially if I get the wiring done on this tonight that will move this along rapidly I need to take some time and get all the wiring done on the TIE fighter I've been neglecting the TIE fighter for this one well, like I said, I ran into a problem on the TIE Fighter that I have not resolved yet. You'll see that in the TIE Fighter videos. And it's not a major thing, but it's an annoying thing. I still haven't figured it out yet. Anyhow, I'm going to get back to work. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, everyone. We're talking power here. I'm going to use a plug like this. This is a size N coax jack. Here's the corresponding power tip. They unscrew for soldering. Okay. What I'll do is I will solder the wires to this, heat shrink them, and then find a brass tube that this just sits in perfectly. Okay. This, I'm going to drill a hole in here. This has a nut and bolt and washer arrangement on it. So once that hole's drilled, I can tighten this thing down on there pretty tight, and it'll hold it really well. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and it's a very similar arrangement to how I did my Viper. If I grab the Viper and pull, you can see the plug is right there, and the jack is there in the bottom of the Viper. This allows me to remove the Viper, and it can still have power. The batteries are burned out. Someone left it on. Yeah, batteries are burned out. Okay. 
But anyhow, it allows it to have power and works really, really well, very easily. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to take it downstairs and drill a big hole right there. I need it centered there. So I'm probably going to drill a pilot hole with my Tamiya Handy Drill to make sure I get that centered exactly where I want it. All right. No Dr. Better tonight. Metro Mint water. I'll be back in a little while and let you know what happens because I can finish all the wiring tonight. Last bit, I got to do a little bit of detail painting along here too once I get this done. I got to paint it on this one and the other piece because I don't want to try to mask and paint this after they're glued together. It's got to be done beforehand. Good thing is I can freehand, I can airbrush that freehand without masking anything because this area over here will be a different color. And I can paint over that. I just found an imperfection in this piece. Right there on that corner right there. It's easy enough to fix. Glad I caught it. It would show primer. Alright, I'm going to get going. Talk to you guys in a bit.